Hello everyone, it is Chastity, the Vegan Virgin, and I have another programming video for today, and for this video, uh, there's a few changes I made. First of all, I want to show you a, a fix I did. Notice how when I stop speaking, the mic slash aux thing goes all the way down to the left, and that is because under filters, I have noise suppression. Uh, filter added here and apparently that is why when I recorded videos with OBS then there would be really horrible scratchy noisy audio and I didn't know what to do but I just figured out hopefully the audio will be good for this um, for this video um, I just wanted to explain that because OBS Studio is the, probably the number one program that I use to record my videos, with the exception of Windows Game Bar when I'm on Windows 10. But OBS works on Linux and Windows. And so I'm on Linux right now. I'm on Ubuntu Linux. Um, I have a beautiful farm picture there. I have my uh, terminal here because I am a terminal user. I tell you, I use the terminal all the time. Okay. But here's the thing. So. I want to do some. I want to do a programming video now. I had done two tutorials before, um, and I want to do something for this episode. I want to continue where I left off. <clears throat> As you see, I have a lot of files now. If you watched my uh, part two, my my well, my lesson. Well, I had lesson zero and I had lesson one. Um, I use was using Windows ten, but since I'm using Linux, I'm going to access my previous, um, let's see here. Well, okay, where did I put, oh yeah, my under the SDLC, I'm accessing, this is actually my Windows drive, but I can access all my Windows files from, um, from Linux. But notice how the new folder and paste option is, is out. And also, if I open this, notice how it says read only. Well, that's because when you access an NTFS partition from Linux, um, you can't uh, edit the files on it. Uh, um, so it's a little bit tricky. So I can't edit the files, but I can view all of my Windows files from Ubuntu Linux, meaning I can copy them and stuff. And so I, have, I had my env development environment set up um, a certain way I, so I can compile my SDL program. So... Take, for example, here, um, under games, like Chase Box Game. Notice I have I have the .exe file. Now, if I double-click the .exe file, an error occurred while loading the archive. Linux doesn't know what a .exe file is, but if you look carefully, you will notice that the source code that I used in my previous videos is all still here. The source code has not changed. So, okay, let's try something. Let's try open terminal. Let's do make. Oh, cannot open output file main. Read-only file system. So I can't compile things in here, obviously, because it can't create a new file. But, so here's what I'm going to do. So notice that we have, okay, we have lessons. Well, lessons one. Okay, lesson, okay, first of all, lesson zero was just setting up a development environment on Windows. I covered that. I may do more, actually. I want to cover a new type of development environment that I discovered recently. So when I boot back up into Windows, I'll do that. But for right now, notice we had lesson one here. So... We, we had this, and so we had this main.c file. I had a main.c file here, and it works. It works amazingly, um, but I can't compile it where it is right now. So we're going to review lesson one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy lesson one from my, my Windows um yeah, for my Windows installation. And then I need to have a new place where I put my SDL lessons. So let's go to desktop. I only have a few files on my Linux desktop. I have stuff about my health insurance. I have my work schedule. And I have chasetrisman.txe. Now this one we're going to look at. Um, this is something I wrote a while about my Tetris game. and explains about the Rayla version, the, the Lua with Love2D, and also the Pico 8 version. So this explains about my Tetris game. 
So I have a post. This was text I wrote before I posted it on my blog. So I don't, but as you see, I don't have much on my desktop. So let's create a new folder. Um, SDL. Okay. And then we will create a new folder. Lessons. Okay. And then we're going to, I copied the folder. Let's, get, let's paste. So now I pasted lesson one off my Windows drive here. But so now that we are on my Linux desktop, well, what can we do here? Well, let's try something. Now let's open a terminal here. Do you, do you see why I love Linux? Like this is why I love Linux people. It's so cool. Ooh, check this out. Interesting. Um, I can copy paste. Yeah. Um, so anyway, let me let me clear that. So we're gonna type make. Oh, I accidentally re misspelled it here. Ooh, no target specified and no make file found. Okay, so we don't have a make file for our uh, lesson uh, one tutorial here. Notice that we had a um, an SDL make .bat file. This was what I use on Linux. It sets the the Windows path and everything, and then it compiles it on on Windows. Okay, but here's what we're going to do. Remember, this is on Linux. So this is lesson one. We're going to delete this file and this file and also this file and also this file. We don't need any of those files. We really don't need a single one of those files. So here's what we're going to do. Notice how we have a main.c file, and if you look here, I type ls. Also, I wonder if I can make the text bigger. Okay, for, for the purposes of my, um, my viewers, I want to make the text bigger, because it's, it's fine enough for me to read, but I want to make sure that people watching my um, videos can see. Okay, so how do I set... Okay, this is preferences. Oh, profiles. Okay. So text, um, okay, what's my current font? Okay, it's, it's a monospace font. I'm not going to change the font. Uh, or wait a minute, or maybe I need, oh, I do need to change the font. Okay, okay, so, oh, interesting. I noticed that it becomes bigger as soon as I do custom font. Okay, let's change the size to 12. It's a monospace font. Let's change it to 16. That's a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can go any bigger than 16. I want to try 24. I like 24 because it's 3 times 8. I don't know why I like that number. Plus, it's the factorial of 4. So, there's that. Okay, so. Oh, that's nice and big. Okay. Oop. Oop, wait. <laughs> I need to sneeze. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've made the text bigger, this is going to make my future Linux videos a lot easier. Now, I've been preaching to people for years how easy Linux is to use. So, clear is because if you do on DOS, it's CLS, but that's not a command uh, on Linux. So, it's clear. And then LS, it shows you have a main.c file. So, we, when I type make, it doesn't do anything because there's no make file. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a make. <laughs> we're going to make a make file. Okay, so here we have a main.c file. So here, okay, so here's a good idea. I am going to open a new tab in my file browser. Let's go, okay, this, okay, because this example um, is not going to use any audio, let's see here. Well, Okay, I have okay, let me look at my SDL because I have several okay, look at this. First of all, I had SDL programs here. Like take for example this. If I go into this one, this one used SDL GFX, which is really kind of cool. So yeah, that that's an example there. Um but that used is GFX and TTF. You can see in the compiling command. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go see in my zero SDL, why did I name it zero SDL here? That's because I wanted it to show up at the top. So by putting a zero there, the alphabetical order did it. So we have several different things, including my chase just game. We have the chase triangle example. Like um, here, for example, um, let's let's go let's go in here, and let's just 
you see that this is a that uses the STL renderer um, but we're not going to use the renderer for this tutorial we're not going to do that yet because um, I want to simplify this um, let's see here but I, I do want to just show you um, here this this is complicated because this uses like the SDL render because we have to had to set the SDL vertex like it was complicated like this code took so much more uh, space because I have a different way to draw a triangle and so I thought okay here's an idea let me see if I can make a video about how to draw a triangle in SDL but without using a renderer and I have an idea Okay, so I have this idea, but first of all, we're going to have to just get a basic working example. Um, so let's go to SDL Chase Triss, and I will, of course, just show you uh, this. I, I make, I type make, and it compiles my uh, Chase Triss game. Ooh, check that out. Check, check that amazing thing out. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that, is, that is so cool. So apparently, yeah, yeah, that, that that's really freaky. Yeah, see, this 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 just happens to be my Tetris game, and I currently have it set on a loop. Um, <laughs> I yeah, see, I have it set on a special loop. It keeps looping, um, and it keeps doing the same exact motions over and over. So yeah, that's that's really cool. And how did I make it do that? Well, let me show you just something. I, I The purpose of this video isn't to show you my Tetris game, but I'm so proud of my Tetris game here. So first of all, um, look at imovelog.txt. We're going to open this file. Can it open this file? I don't know if my computer can open this file. It's a 2.4 megabyte text file. Let me... Let me see how things are progressing here. Okay, so there's that terminal for SDL Lesson 1. And I think, okay, I don't think it's capable of opening that text file because it's too huge. So, okay, here's a fine example. I'm going to show you, um, let me go, okay, that's, that's the OBS Studio thing. Since, wait, wait a minute. Okay, let me let me go to okay it, it it okay we're gonna force quit because the text editor can't open that text file. So what are we gonna do? How do we view a text file if the graphical text editor won't do it? I'm, I'll show you. Look at this. So if I do cat imovelog.txt, it just well it displayed it all really quick like that. Okay, now and tr and look at this now. If we had instead done type, if we had done t type, um, then notice it says type command not found. That's because type is the DOS version of the Linux cat command. It's bizarre, but as you see, that's a big file. But how did I create such a large file? Well, I'm going to show you that too without even opening the text editor. Let's do cat um, logmaker.lua. The, no, and look at this. This is uh, an example script it, written in Lua. First, it opens the iMove log file, and then it writes predefined commands. There are all these commands, you know, because my, my Tetris game is actually a programming language because it, it reads commands um, at, in the form of single characters, and it just repeats those commands several times over to create a, a, a giant file. So that's how I, ma I make things like that. But anyway, um, that wasn't what I came here to show you. What I came to show here in this video was to be able to have a make file. Let's copy this make file here. We're going to copy this make file. Okay, and we're going to go to my desktop. We're going to do that. Go to lessons. And then we have, we're going to copy the make file here. So now that we've copied the make file to the lesson one, okay, that's the wrong terminal. There's more than one. Now we have make file here. We're going to cat make file. You see this? This shows um, this show because 
the, my make files are configured for Linux. So if we type make, let's look at this. Let's type make. Oh, see, there it is. We, yeah, as soon as I type make, it just compiles and runs the lesson one program. That shows the the squares here, the two squares and the and the big red window here. Now notice it has the first one Unix uh, underscore SDL. That's by default one. And let's look back at this folder. So we have an executable file that's 16.6 kilobytes. That's impressive. Let's, we can double click it and also run the program. It's cool. We can, yep. So, but. What about the static option? What about that? Let's try make static. Ooh, cannot find LA sound. No such file or directory. So it can't find lib A sound. That's bizarre. Huh. Very interesting. Well, I wonder. Okay, I'm going to do a little search here apt search a sound let's see we're just gonna see here because um it, oh by the way i just did you see what i did i typed that command so see apt search a sound uh, sound searches for a package we're using the linux package manager for ubuntu which is of course apt um or synap you can also use synaptic for gra graphical so Let's see here. We have that one, but do, we we have several things. But what about a sound? Lib also lib a sound. Okay, it looks like the um, shared. There's a shared library for also application development files, but it has a shared library. It does not have a static library. That's very interesting. Is there any way to, well, I can't, that's why I cannot, I cannot um, static link it. But theoretically, um, yeah, and just even though we're, uh, this, this program doesn't use sound, the default SDL library, it, it works because when we type make, it works. But SDL uh, is configured to use the shared library. Okay, so I said the purpose of this video was to help teach how to draw a triangle. Well, there is a way to do this. Now, this is going to look a little bit complicated at first, okay? So bear with me. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to exit out of this terminal. And notice how this is lesson one. What we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to copy that folder and then we're going to paste it. And we're going to rename this as two. So I've just made a copy of that folder. Use it. And I do this like all the time. See, I use um, I use um, the this file explorer just like as if it was the Windows Explorer. So we have a make file. And also just a note. Um, so the make file is here. And the make file, okay. I want to make this bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger, okay. Let me do the same thing. I'm going to go to Preferences. We're going to go Font and Colors, Noto. Um, what, okay, what's this? Oh, okay, that's it. We're going to go Noto Mono Regular. Yeah, Noto is a good font. And we're going to go to jump it to size 24 because it's nice and big. So that work. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This entire line here, because the, the, the make file, you have a rule, and then you have a, a, a um, you know, new line, and then a tab. This is actually a tab character. It's invisible. But th this uh, right here, this is the command. This is the command that we use to compile and run the program. Now, the LM program, I mean, the LM library, that includes the math library. And the math library is required for certain things involving regular polygons and stuff like that. But I'm go I want to draw a very basic triangle. So I'm going to try this, okay? So I'm going to show you a way to make a very, I'm going to try to do the best program that just draws a triangle. That's what I'm going to do. So we're going to make this easier. What we're going to do is, first of all, Let's uh, set, um, okay, we're going to make some changes here. We're going to 
it's, we're going to make the background be black, okay? The background is going to be black. In fact, th there is a way to choose the color of something without actually using the SDL map red, green, blue function. We're, I'm going to show you. So check this out. If I do OX, FF, OO, FF, and do the fill rect function there, then we're going to go back to the terminal. Oh, I need to I need to open the terminal window within lesson two's folder. Open in terminal, make. Notice it's magenta. Well, why is it magenta? Well, that's because I gave it a hexadecimal number, and the, I'm going to explain it because this is my preferred format for doing it. We made it magenta. We made the background magenta. So look at this. So the the first two digits here um, are uh, FF. And that means 255 of red. Then two digits of zero, so it's completely zero for green. And then we have um, uh, the blue value, which is FF. So what if we reverse this? What if instead we do OO, FF, OO? Then what we have done is, look at this. Now you can't see the small green square because the background itself is green. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it black, okay? Oh, interesting. I don't even have to. Since it's black, I could just do zero, but I'm just going to make it simple that way. Need to catch my breath. Okay, so here, you know, as in lesson one, we have our variables. We created our window with SDL, all that stuff. And, of course, we can draw the rectangles. But we want to draw... A triangle. Well, how do we draw a triangle? Well, there's a way to do it, but it, this is this little bit complicated. I'm going to show you a way to do this, um, and I'm going to have to copy some code from another project. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to uh, set. Okay, I'm going to this is this area here. Um, is going to be new. So I'm going to copy from my Chase Box game because I use pixel. I have I have my own pixel library here. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to copy my pixel function. So yeah, this um this is a function I wrote. Um and I'm going to copy this function here. What we're going to do Okay, so I'm going to copy this. What we need to do in order for this, this to work, we need to copy the chased pixel function here. So what we're going to do is just before the main function begins, we're going to copy the chased pixel function. So that's the way to do it. So I'm going to explain. So SDL surface is the surface that th these are the arguments for the function. SDL surface is going to be the um, the surface that we're drawing to, which is also just named surface. So for uh, you know, and so there's the x y coordinates of a pixel and the color, and then it creates a pointer, a 32-bit pointer, destination surface pointer, and then it sets that to it uses a typecast. In fact. I think you can do it. Uh, I can think you can do it like this, in fact, without even using the cast. But I'm going to use the cast because it's required in C++. Okay, and then it so it sets the pointer to the surface pixels, and then it sets that color. There's a formula here: x plus y times the width, which in this case is represented by uh, by the surface width. You use a pointer to the surface width there. So we're going to use my chase pixel function, to, which I copied. I just copied it straight from this source file. I just copied my chase pixel function. I made my own function to draw a pixel to a surface. And we'll get more into why I did that soon. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to type in, we're going, first we're going to make a single pixel. So let me try something. Let's do a pixel at 
five, 500, 500. Okay, so chased pixel. Okay, we're going to draw to this surface. Then it's going to be at coordinate 500 X and 500 Y. And then it's going to be a color. So let's make a red pixel at 500, 500. Okay, let's try that. We're going to try that and see if it works. Um, hmm, I don't see it. I wonder if I did anything wrong in my code. There's a chance I may have done something wrong in my code here. So, um, so chase pixel. So, let me see here. So I, I I believe I did it right because we have the surface, the x, y coordinates, and the color. So this is interesting. So it should work, but no okay, or maybe I just can't see it. Let's let's make the pixel white. Let's just make the pixel white and see if it shows up. Ah, there it is, right there. I don't know if you can see this on the video. But right where my arrow is pointing here, around this area, this is where I see a single white pixel. And but when the pixel was was red, it was hard to see, but it does appear. So that's literally how you can draw a single pixel in SDL. But I'm gonna make the pixel white again, just so we can see this. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We have the pixel function. It draws a single pixel there. We've left these two squares here and here. Next, we want to try to draw a line. If you can draw a pixel, you can draw a line, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy paste from here. We're going to copy the chase line function. And here we have a link to the Rosetta code place here, the Rosetta code function here. And we're going to copy this function. We're not going to copy the comment, but I'm going to copy this function. This is a function I wrote by copy-pasting the code from the link given above. Uh, okay, we're going to copy this. And then we're going to do something here. So we're going to, um, let's, okay, here's an idea. We're going to copy-paste. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you. If I try to copy paste that function here, we'll see what happens. I can try to compile it, and it it works. But warning: implicit declaration of function chase pixel. Did you mean chase line? Well, here's the thing. Watch this. If I undo that, and then we instead copy the chase line function to be after chase pixel, then let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, the function works without, I mean, the program works without any compilation errors or warnings. So now what we're going to do is this, you may not understand this code, you don't have to understand this, but this is how you draw a line to an SDL surface. And it's not included in the SDL library itself. You have to use Bresenham's algorithm to achieve this, unless you have a better algorithm out there that I don't know about. But this has been used since 1962, so it's, it's good enough. So what we're going to do here, we're going to draw a line. We're going to do chased. We're going to change pixel to line. Now, if I try to do it like that, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all because there's too few arguments. You see that? So now what we're going to do is let's talk about, okay, we're going to go to 300, okay, 300x by 300 uh, y, and then we're going to draw a line, we're gonna add two more coordinates to 400 by 400, okay, yeah, x and y, 400. We're gonna do this, we're gonna try this. You see that line there? We have a line here, it works. And now that's a straight diagonal line, but let's, what if we wanna do it different than that? Okay, let's try it. Let's change the the second coordinate. Let's try it. let's change this to 500. Let's change the second y coordinate to 500. Oh, you see? 
now the line goes down more than it used to before. But it's still a line. It's still a beautiful line. And that line is made up of tiny pixels. This little pixel, a whole bunch of those white pixels make up this line. I create a line in SDL. And But let's change this. Let's change back for it. Let's change this to 500 here. Okay, so we, we can draw rectangles, which we ha have up here, the blue and green rectangles. We have a line that we're drawing and a single pixel here. Now, if you can draw a line, you can draw a triangle, of course, right? You can absolutely draw a triangle, and I'm going to show you how to draw a triangle. But to do that, I'm going to copy another function. Um, actually, before I do that, though, you have to have some advanced understanding about surfaces in order to pull this off. But for right now, all you need to know is that I've created a function. You can call the function and draw um, uh, any pixels or, or lines of pixels to that surface by doing it. Now, there's only one surface in this program. If I had more than one surface, I would just change the argu first argument here. But one surface is enough for most programs. But the and the point and the pointer the pointers are a little bit more of a, a it's a very good C and C plus plus programming concept you need to understand pointers. But the reason it's U int thirty two is because it's thirty two bits per pixel, to, uh, eight bits for red, green, and blue, and eight for alpha. So it's a thirty two bit format. And how do we how did I know that it's thirty two bits? Well, I just lucked out because usually it's 32 bits. Now, if it was a different format surface, then this code wouldn't work. This is only for 32 bits, which is the default usually. Okay, so now we're going to do chase trigon. It's named trigon, the Greek for triangle, instead of triangle, which is, a, a, but it's a triangle nonetheless. So whether it's chase trigon or chase triangle, it's still going to work. We're going to copy chase trigon. Okay, I, I, I don't know why I do control C multiple times, but I had a, I had a thought. Okay, so anyway, now we're going to copy and before the main function, but after the others, we're going to do chase to trigon. Now we want to have an example here. We want to have an example. What's a good triangle to draw? What sort of triangle could we draw? Well, I actually uh, have there is code that draws a triangle using this function that already exists. And I'm going to copy it here. We're, we're going to just call the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm go now we have the triangle function, and there's more functions here. Um, but right now I'm going to go to a separate source file from my game here. We're going to go to chase. We're going to go to sdlboxgame.h, and then we're going to do we're going to search for trigon. Okay, here is a triangle. Now we're not going to use this because my font library is not included, but we're going there and there's even a chase trigon. But what we're going to do here is we're going we're going to change this a little bit because I, the trigon fill function is not currently uh, we're not I'm not going to include that in this video. Filling a trigon is a little bit different, and and you can rename the function to triangle instead of trigon. But what I'm going to do here is now, if I leave it as is, it's not going to work because implicit, yeah, there is no function named chase trigon, but there is one just because the, the chase trigon fill function has a filled polygon, a filled triangle or trigon. But now, if we take off the fill, look at that. We have a triangle. We have an SDL program that ha has two different colors of squares. And then it has a white line, a white pixel, and a white triangle. And that's because I gave it the coordinates. So here we have the coordinates. The first two uh, here, first x, first y, y, second x, second y, third x, third y. So it works. So here we have it. We have... We can do squares, we can do lines, pixels, and triangles. And all, literally all you need to do that in this and future programs is you need my functions I wrote. 
And you can write your own functions if you prefer to do it a different way. But this is just the way I implemented it in my game. So a pixel, pixel function, chase pixel, chase line, and chase trigon. You can totally do that. You'd, you could even change the names of the functions if you want. If you wanted to change it to simply line, you could do that, or just trigon. Or if you wanted to change chase trigon to chase triangle, or just plain triangle, you can do that. So I have it set up so that you can do that. I'm just one more time. I'm just going to show this, and there we have it. We have the most perfectly written. Oh, there's one problem. SDL lesson one. We need to change it. This is lesson two, baby. Why do I say baby? Okay, that's weird. Must have been from watching Austin Powers. I don't know. Okay, anyway. So, we're going to change it to SDL Lesson 2. We're going to do that. It's kind of weird how this is, though. Like, why in the world? I don't get it. Why is... I don't even know why this, this is happening. I think it's because I made the font bigger. Oh, oh yeah, that's because it's it's a very long uh, function, so it's a little bit off. So now here, what we have is we have SDL lesson two in the title bar. We have the the our squares. We have the line. We have the pixel. We have the triangle, and the triangle looks good. It's just not filled in. In lesson three, I want to get into filling a triangle. That's going to be a lot of fun, okay? So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I believe I will probably make this lesson, I'm going to make this public, because I want people to see that this can be done. But in the future examples, I may have it be a requirement for my people to be my patron on Patreon. I am starting a Patreon business. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do here. I am going to, um, okay, well, let's just do that one more time. Let's just show this one more time. We've got it. We've got it. Look, oh, and you can move the window around, obviously, like you can on any desktop operating system. We can move the window around wherever we like. But notice how it's in the center. That's because I have it configured that way in the code. Now, let's take a look at something. ls, we have these three files. ls-l, it tells the number of bytes of each of these files. We have our main.c file, our entire source file is 2309 characters. And the make file is 247. If I have only one make file rule, I could totally reduce it. But anyway, we've seen that the program works. We have it here, we have a complete program, and we can I can X out of that, and it's 2.3 kilobytes. And it works, and the main, uh, main, program there it runs and it runs SDL lesson 2 so this completes SDL lesson 2 I can draw a line a triangle and a pixel and of course rectangles with SDL's built-in functions using only surfaces I kid you not this can be done now uh, one final thing I do want to say though um, and I'm going to look at this one more time is I want to say that if there's something about this lesson that you don't understand then please, um, you know, give me your comments if there's anything you don't understand about this lesson so that I can go over it when I review lesson two as part of lesson three. So this is lesson two, and there's going to be more lessons, and they're all going to be on my Patreon, and possibly some may be available on YouTube or Facebook too, but I want to give people free samples here and show people this stuff. Because I'm going to be getting into some graphics. I'm going to be getting into drawing circles and triangles, filling the triangles and circles. This is just the beginning. I'm starting with SDL, and it's it becoming amazing. So thank you for uh, watching uh, or listening to this video, and I hope this has explained some things for you. Have a, And as I always say to my floral customers at hy V, have a fabulous day. Time to stop the recording. Goodbye.